about and get others that you might disciple and that you'd be able to give the truth to. See, there's things that you can gain on the earth. And you can gain them, you can get your cars, you can get your houses, you can get your fancy clothes, you can get yourself all kinds of stuff, you really can. But remember something, when it's said and done, it stays here. Yeah. It's not going with you. The things that are going to go with you are the things that you do for eternity, yeah. sake. The things that you do with the idea that this is an eternal thing I'm doing. Whether it be teaching a class, whether it be singing in a choir, singing in an ensemble, singing in a quartet, in a duet, whether it be just witnessing, whatever it may be. But when you do it and you're doing it and you're doing it as under the Lord, you know, that's that thing that's going to be there when you go and you stand in front of him. And you and him meet eyes. That one that you've only heard about in the Bible, the one you've only heard preachers preach about, the one that you've heard talked about for as many years that you've been saved, that one. One day you'll actually we look him dead in his eyes and at that time and at that moment he and you will lock eyes and let me tell you something he will then at that time you'll know well you're going to hear those words well done thou good and faithful servant and you know what that's what we all really want to hear right yeah, if we man. think about it we want that person that is our father our father figure to say boy you gave it your all you did a good job and I'm glad you're home and I mean wouldn't you rather hear that one day rather than get up there and have have him go, well, you made it. Barely. Barely. Had a hard time getting you to do what was right. Had a hard time getting you to listen. Had a hard time getting you to stop focusing on the world and the things in this tangible world that we live in because those things are not eternal. Those things are temporal. Those things come and go. They're like a leaf. I mean, you know, come summertime and I mean, come uh, springtime, all of a sudden you get the buds on the ends of the tree and you get looking and all of a sudden it starts to sprout and you look and you go, glory to God, look at that thing, man. Look at those leaves. That oak tree is just beautiful. Look at it. I mean, the leaves are magnificent and strong. But then all of a sudden, no matter what takes place, it don't matter. When the fall comes, you know what happens? They fall. It's over. Their glory is only for a season. It's only for a few months. That's it. People come around and go look at the point of trees are beautiful, aren't they? And then they come back and pick them up off the ground. And they go, boy, we'll take these and put them in a book now and save them. You know why? Because that thing that is beautiful was produced by a tree. That tree produced fruit. And let me ask you something. What are you going to produce with your life? I mean, maybe you'll produce in your life a good career. Maybe you'll produce in your life a great, uh, a great ability to play sports. Maybe you'll do a lot of great things in this world. But what will they do in eternity, friend? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Eternity is what matters. Yeah. Not this temporal. Not this temporary. Nice. Let's go on if we could. Let's go back to Daniel this evening if we could. Uh, in Daniel chapter number 12, the last book in the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter number 12. <clears throat> this evening. This morning we talked about the last days. We talked about the tribulation period and we talked about those seven years that the Jew, remember that, the Israelite will be dealing with that seven week period that was prophesied back in Daniel chapter number nine. In Daniel chapter number nine it said these events would take place. The only problem was for all these years nobody could understand it. Nobody could understand what was being talked about because the events hadn't taken taking place yet. Amen. Right. It's not until the events start taking place that you can say, oh, I see that. Israel has now become a nation again. Oh, okay. Now I see that. And you're able to begin to put these things together. But in Daniel chapter number 12, and rather than do what I normally do, which is backtrack and go over a whole bunch of stuff that has nothing to do with my message, I'm going to do what's hard for me and go right to chapter 12. And at that time, because you know what I want to tell you is what that time was, amen. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince. Now you heard about Gabriel, amen. Mm -hmm. Gabriel, now you're hearing about Michael, the two archangels, Gabriel and Michael. You know, you, you think these are just stories that are told. These are real people. Gabriel's described as a man who talked with Daniel and gave Daniel what was going to take place. He's the one that told him, this is this, man. This is what's going to take place. And Daniel said, wow. And he said, guess what? I'm going to give you knowledge. I'm going to give you understanding. I'm going to give you all that, but seal it up. Seal it up. Don't reveal it. Don't tell him what it all means. 
It's for a later time. It's for an end. Listen, thousands of years ago, they said in the last days when man's on this planet, before Jesus Christ comes back for the second time, guess what? These events are going to take place. These events are going to take place. And the events that are going to take place is Israel. We talked about it. Israel is going to be taken and have their back into the corner. They're not going to be able to get out. All of the uh, those over there in uh, uh, Psalm 82 that had made a confederacy against uh, Israel, the Edomites, the Ammonites, the Moabites, all of them will come into a league and come against Israel and they'll back them up against the wall. There'll be nowhere to go. It'll look like it's over. They'll be down for the count. They'll be level, be saying it's over. I'm going to defeat God's chosen people. I'm going to take Israel, the Hebrew, Jacob's people, Abraham's people, I I'm going to destroy them once and for all and be done with it. But we know that's not what takes place. Amen. Amen. We know that the Lord has always got a remnant. Right. The Lord has always got a remnant. Yeah. Our problem in America today is we've taken the Bible and we've made it be all about us. Yeah. And I've told you, be careful if you want to take all the blessings this book has for the children of Israel. You better be ready to take the curses that come with being one of God's chosen. Amen. Amen. Listen. We take the church and we start calling us God's chosen people. You're taking stuff from the Old Testament and you're smearing it all over yourself. We are a mystery. The whole church age. It's that age when God said, okay, okay, if you don't act right, I'm going to get me another one. You hear me, bride and wife? Israel's my wife. If you don't straighten out, I'm going to get me another one. I'm going to get me a bride. And guess what? They didn't straighten out. Mm -hmm. So we got him a bride. That's us. Mm -hmm. The whole purpose in us being uh, wooed in by God the Father is to make the Jew jealous. Right. So the Jew would go, look at what they're getting. They're getting their answered prayer, their prayers answered. They're getting the blessings of God the Creator. They're, talk, they're calling up to heaven and God sending down victory for them. But that's not what's happening. Instead, the Jew is looking at us and saying, you got to be kidding me. They think they're worshiping our God. Hmm. Our God took and parted the Red Sea. Our God took and he what? He made the he made the uh, 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 the mount to tremble at his appearing in Exodus 20. The whole mountain quaked at his appearing. This is a God that is terrible. A God that you should stand in awe over. But what we live in today is a day and age where the Christian is so weak in his prayers, so weak. In his devotion to God, that the Jew looks at us like we're phonies, fugazis, fraudulent, not the real deal. Because if we really knew Jehovah God, the one who with his mouth created everything that there was, we would not be so weak in our faith. Hey, and you know, I told you, my faith many times can get knocked around, man, and I start looking, I want to see. I don't want to just hope. I want to see. You know, I get it. It's a rough go. But, but that Jew, he takes and he looks at us. And either we're going to make him want to be converted over to the Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus, or we're going to make him go, if that's the God they serve, he's not potent. He's not strong. He's impotent. He can't get the job done. That's what they'd be saying about us. Because we take in, we take in, the Bible says God's people will never be found begging for bread. But you know what we do? We take and we have a problem even letting God sometimes supply for us. And I don't mean to point them out, but we have a hard time with it. We go, God, I can supply for myself. He knows that. But when you take and decide you're going to live by faith, he may want to get you to live by faith. He may get you to try to go, you know what, God? If this is what you provided for me, then I'm going to take it. And I'm going to take it willingly. And I'm going to say thank you. I'm not going to take it, throw it back in your face. It goes on here. Now let's look at uh, Daniel chapter number 12. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. Now remember, as he's saying this, if you've read your Bible at all, you know there's been plenty of trouble. I believe there was a worldwide flood, yeah. <laughs> right? There was a worldwide flood. I believe there was a bunch of stuff that went on. And uh, anyway, it goes on, it says, and at that time, thy people shall be delivered. 
every one that shall be found written in the book. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Uh oh, sounds like a rapture. Some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Now you remember, he's dealing with the Jew here, not you. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. What a verse, amen? Look at that. And they that be wise shall be as the brightness of the firmament. And you know the firmament's up there. When you look up at night and you're looking up at that icy, icy firmament up there and you see those stars up there, you might not realize it, but without those stars up there, it'd be pitch black. Mm -hmm. We may not see the light that it shines down on us, but it shines down on us. It goes on and it says, uh, in the, uh, verse 4, But thou, O Daniel, now here's what I want you to do, and I want you to put next to chapter 12, verse 4, cross-reference that to Revelation 22, 10. Okay? But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Okay? And then he puts a colon there. Now, ready? Many shall run to and fro, and notice this, and knowledge shall be increased. Now, listen, <laughs> if you haven't studied history at all and seen what's taken place in just the last 75 years with technology, better yet, how about the last 25 years? Well, better yet, how about the last 10 years with technology? We are not going anymore from one little thing to another little. We're going leaps and bounds. And if there was a time when talking, I believe they call it Skype, right? Skyping. Okay, let me tell you something. There was a time when that was on our cartoons. It was laughed about on the Jetsons. The Jetsons used to take, and the Mama Jetson would want to talk to Daddy Jetson, and she'd push a button, and the screen would pop up, and she would be able to talk to him. And we laughed, and we thought it was funny. And they talked about, ready? Robots. Robots. Pets that were robots. And we laughed at that and thought it was funny. Guess what's not funny no more? You can buy robots. Guess what? All these things that were just 25 years ago, 30 years ago, science fiction to the utmost are now in every home. How about this one? Is it Shuri or Suri? Suri. Could you take and do this for me? I sure can. I'm listening to everything. I can hear everything you folks are saying. Mm. And so can anybody else that I decide to let hear what you folks are saying in your house. Well, we've come a long way when we now take and wiretap our own houses. Mm -hmm. Hey, knowledge has increased. You know why? We're living in the last days right. before the millennial reign of Jesus Christ, which is to say a whole new world system. What do you think this book is about? Salvation? No. It's about a king and a kingdom. This book isn't about salvation. Salvation is an afterthought. This book is all about a king and a kingdom. You know who the first king was? Lucifer. You know who the second king was? Adam. You want to know who the third king was? Noah. Want to keep going? Yes, dear. Do you know how there was a dark Yes, dear. But Jesus said that was going to happen. Yeah, that wasn't so. Because history repeats itself. Her teacher told her. Because history repeats itself, we're going to go back to the dark ages. Have you looked at the dark ages? Back when Joey had a headache today. Someone get a drill, would you? Joe's got a headache. We, he's got a, we got a headache. We got a, hey, let me tell you something. The things they did back then, you know, I mean, drilling in the head because the head hurt. Yeah. Well, we thought that that was just nonsense. Guess what? It's the truth. It's the truth and it works. Yeah. All kinds of things we're learning that the people we thought were ignorant weren't so ignorant. But in these last days, knowledge will increase to a point like never before. Oh, wait a minute. Like the days of Noah. Yeah. And guess what else it says in that verse? People will be doing what? Traveling what? To and fro. Now you go, well, that's no big deal. I know to you guys, but you figured out it was a big deal. I know, say, about 1920. Well, how about 1925? How about 1935? You reckon everybody was jumping in cars back then? Or if you did like me and checked out Worcester in 1935 and seen all the horse and buggies still running around? I know what you thought. You thought cars came into existence in 1910, 1915, and automobiles were everywhere. No, no. 
Not so much. Not so much. Did you want to say something? Uh, Tom, there's like a cross reference that like, uh, like you were talking about like stars. Yeah. And so like I read this the other day really? from First Corinthians uh, 15, 40 and 42. Yep. So, uh, there are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial, but the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. Uh, there is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon, another glory of the stars, for one star different from the other star in glory. Also, so also is the resurrection in, of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. Yes. That's a, that's, a, that's excellent verses right there. Read that again for me, though. I want to stop you in a second. Go ahead, start reading again. Uh, there is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars. For one star different from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. Uh, there's some more. Keep going. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in What's glory. What's the celestial? That's what I'm looking for. He skipped terrestrial. it. Okay. The celestial and the terrestrial. That's what I've been talking to you guys about for the last three months. Mm -hmm. Right? The celestial up there and the terrestrial down here. Do you see the comparisons there? And by the way, that star that he mentions there and the stars that are mentioned, if you did a cross-reference throughout, you find that the stars are, in fact, much different than what we've been told. Because if you went to school and you were told what I was told, it's a big fat lie. We were told that the stars are simply suns. That's what we were told, that a star is simply a sun that's far, far away. And the sun is the closest star to us. Yeah. Okay, that's what we were told in school. The sun was the closest star to us. Well, that's not true. And we know that now, but why was it true back then? But um, anyway, the terrestrial and the celestial. Let's go on here. Knowledge shall be increased. Then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, there stood other two, and one on the sea side and on the bank of the river, and the other on that side of the bank of the river. And one said to the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, How long shall it be to the end of these wonders? And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever that it shall be for a time, times, and a half. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter, this really blew me away here. When he, look at this, when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. Interesting. And I heard, but I understood not. Then said I, O oh my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? Here we go. And he said, go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly. And none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. And here's what you're going to understand. Now look. And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away and the abomination that maketh desolate set up, there shall be a 2,290 days or 3.5 years, three and a half years. Blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the 1,305 and 30 days. That's the second half. But go thy way till the end be. For thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of days. Now we're going to go over to Revelation, but before we do, I want you to notice something. Because here in verse number 9, 12, 9, you've got the sealing of the book. And then you've got verse number 10, and it says, Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Here's what you'll understand, that the abomination of desolation, what we talked about this morning, after the three and a half years, he sets this image up. And when he sets this image up, a clock begins to tick. And guess what? It's one of those times where you will be able to go. We know the day and the hour. Want to know why? Because it says from the time that that gets set up, it counts the very days. 
It's going to be three and a half years, or actually 300, and what's it say? 350, 335 days, whatever it is, uh, whatever it says, uh, uh, 1,300. That's three and a half years, all right? What it's telling us there is that from that moment that the abomination of desolation is set up, once that thing is set up, those that begins to click, and there's no stopping it. Three and a half years of the biggest tribulation and greatest tribulation that mankind has ever seen. And we're talking about a time when there was a flood. It's the great tribulation, not a tribulation, not a time of tribulation, not some tribulation, but the great tribulation. And at the end of these three and a half years, count it, the moment he sets up the abomination of desolation in the temple, he sets that up and that clock begins to tick. And guess what's going to happen at the end of those three and a half years? He's coming back. And that's when he sets this thing right. And Jesus Christ rules and reigns on this earth for 1,000 years as the king over the kingdom of the earth or the kingdom of heaven. This is the kingdom of heaven. It's an actual yeah. literal place. Yeah. There's three heavens. Mm. Okay, You know that. We don't go into that tonight. Let's go over to Revelation. I just want to show you something quickly here. How that when the book is opened, how that he tells you it almost repeats the same Revelation chapter 22. Last book of the Bible. Last book of the Bible. Revelation chapter 20 and verse number 10. And I want you to notice that Revelation 22, 10, he claims here, he says to him, And he saith unto me, John, seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. Now look at verse number 11. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. What did it say in Daniel? Let him that be wicked, let him stay wicked. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. Decisions that are made, are made while you're here. We've got an event that takes place here, and it says in um, Revelation chapter 22, verse number 10, he says, don't seal this book up. He then says, he that's unjust, let him be unjust still. He which is filthy, let him be filthy still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. Now ready? And behold, I come quickly. My reward is with me to give every man according to his work, uh, according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life. My, my, my. See what happens when you think everything's about you? You didn't eat from no tree of life, right. did you? There's going to be another tree of life. The book of Revelation begins to talk about a millennial period, thousand years, when guess what? The tree of life is once again on the planet Earth. And guess what? I already told you this. The Antichrist is going to come along, and what he's going to offer mankind is going to be eternal life. He's going to offer them eternal life, and if the God used a tree, you can guarantee he's going to use some type of tree or some type of uh, apparatus, and he's going to claim that if you take this, if you let me give you this mark, let me implant it into you, you're going to live forever. And once you take that, there's no turning back. Now you tell me something. Here's a time in life when they're going to say, you can't feed your kids unless you come and get this mark. Here's a time where they're going to say, you can't get gas. You can't buy. You can't sell. You can't do anything unless you have this mark. But yet people think they're going to make a decision for God during that period of time. It won't be done. It can't be done. It can't be done. And if it could be done, then everybody could simply say, I'll wait. Here he takes and he goes on and he says, Amen. He says, uh, blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have the right to the tree of life. Somebody says, what? The commandments? Yeah. During the millennial reign of Jesus Christ, the commandments come back into play. See, what happens to you and I, we're selfish, self-centered, and we think everything in the Bible is about us. Yeah. Amen? We do. We begin to look at everything in here and go, oh, that's for us. That's for me. That one's for me. This one's for me. This is a period of time when the Lord Jesus Christ, he takes, he takes us up out of this mess before the tribulation ever starts. And then when we come back, it's to kick butt. 
And then we rule and reign with them for a thousand years on this earth. You see, but we want to take and get involved and we want to change this and say, oh, no, this is talking about for you and I. Well, let me tell you something. Blessed are they that do his commandments. I'm not blessed because of any commandments. I'm blessed because of grace. I'm blessed because of what took place on the cross of Calvary. Yeah. Not because I obey commandments. The commandments, look at them. There's 10 of them. I don't know how many you broke, but I broke plenty of those commandments. I'll probably break a few more before the end of the day. It just is, man. It's the way it is. We're still stuck in this flesh. We're fighting our flesh day and night to keep it in subjection. He goes on and it says, uh, look at, for without our dogs. Oh, by the way, blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have the have right to the tree of life. Oh, got to do those commandments to have a right to the tree of life. And may enter, enter in through the gates into the city. Now look at, for without our dogs. Now. I don't mean to get you all riled up, but what was on the outside of the temple were the Gentiles. The yeah. temple didn't allow the Gentiles, amen? The Gentiles had a court outside where they would come and they would take and uh, serve the Lord on the outside. They weren't allowed to go in and look at the showbread. They weren't allowed to go over to the, the menorah. They weren't allowed to go to the uh, prayer of incense, the incense or prayer. They weren't allowed to do any of that stuff. They were on the outside. And now here he is talking about the millennial reign. And what does he do? He says on the outside of the city are dogs, sorcerers, whoremongers, murderers, idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. My, my, my. People try to tell you this guy's about going to heaven and hell. Are they retarded? Seriously, think about it. Are you nuts? How can you even go there? How can you even take it? Because for without our dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie, they're all booted out. They're not allowed in. That's got nothing to do with you and me. You're in, amen. For well, by amen. grace are you saved. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't nothing you did. Not by works of righteousness that we have done, Galatians 2.16. Not by works of right. How about Titus 3.5? All of them tells us that it's nothing we did to get us into God's good graces. The only thing that gets you into the grace of God is you accepting a free gift. But like Sonny didn't want to accept a free gift from a stranger, people don't want to accept a free gift of salvation. They'd rather work their way to heaven and wind up in hell. All because of pride. All because of pride, thinking you could actually be good enough to get in front of Jesus Christ and go, I deserve to come into heaven because I've been a good boy. Let me tell you something. You can't be bad enough or good enough. It's got nothing to do with you. It's got to do with whether you receive what Jesus Christ did on the cross of Calvary. If you'll receive that, then guess what? You're guaranteed eternal life. You repent of your sin, you turn to Jesus Christ, and guess what? You become that new creature. It's verse 16. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I'm the root and the offspring of David. Oh, King David, the Jew. Okay. And the bright and morning star. Ready? And the spirit and the bride say, come. And let him that heareth say, come. And let him that is a thirst come. Whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. For I testify. Unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. You wonder if God means what he says? Because here's what he says. Any man that takes this book right here, the book of Revelation, I won't do what other preachers do and try to tell you, he take it for it. No, we're talking book of Revelation. It's the prophecy of this book right here. You can take it for the whole Bible, but this prophetic book right here, if you mess with this book, he's going to mess with you. And he tells you that. You'll get the curses. You ever read the curses in this book? You ever read what takes place? You start in Genesis chapter, I mean, uh, Revelation chapter number one and get reading. And you know what? You will be terrified at what takes place. You will read about a king coming out of a pit. You read about a king coming out of a pit. And they unlock this pit and this king comes out. And following him are giant uh, scorpions, that uh, giant locusts that have tails like a scorpion. And they, they take and they sting people. And then you know what happens? The people don't die. They wish they'd die, but they don't die. They wish they'd die, but they can't die. Imagine that. There's going to be a time when man will cry and say, God, just kill me. Send me to hell. Can't take it no more. You know what? They will, the Bible says they will cry out to be put to death, and they won't be put to death. 
Listen, God puts it out to all of mankind. Back in the Old Testament, he took and he said, he met with men, and then he took, and you can get confused reading your Old Testament. You can walk away going, God's a bloody God. And he took the Hebrews and lifted them up above everybody and favored them, and that's why everybody hates them, all that stuff. But what you're doing is missing the point. Genesis talks about two seeds. There's a seed of man, and then there's a serpent seed, the seed of the serpent. The seed of the serpent was planted in Eve, and that seed has been going against mankind ever since. You ever wonder why Cain did what he did? Never, never stuck with you why two men are born to the same mother, supposedly from the same father, but one ends up being a guy that takes and gets the sheep and cuts it and brings it to God, and the other one comes full of pride and says, look what I've done. And then when God says, boy, if you did better, I could work with you, son. He takes and gets his brother out in the, in the field, and because he's jealous that his brother's in right relationship with God, he kills him. And then when God comes and says, hey, Cain, have you seen your brother? He says, what am I, my brother's keeper? And God says to him, no, but I sure do hear that blood crying out from the earth. Yeah. And the Bible says that Mark was put on Cain. And that Cain would have a mark on him forever. And that if any man killed him, think about that. You go, will God take and get him? No. God said if anybody did go after Cain, they'd get vengeance on them. Crazy, huh? Crazy. All right. Let's take a look here and see if we can finish up. If I can bring this thing to a close. All right. Uh, he goes on and it says... Uh, in verse number 19, if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life mm -hmm. and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Now, remember something. If you want to take a look, you'll find that there's the Lamb's book of life. There's a book of life. There's other books that are mentioned in the Bible. Now, would you be surprised if I told you that the day that you got saved, your name was written down in an eternal book? People want to say that you can lose your salvation. I say that's got to be one big eraser. Right. Yeah. That's got to be a big eraser. If all of a sudden you're sitting up in up there and God's in heaven and he says, oh, uh, uh, Dre has gone too far away now. and She's gone too far in sin. So let's erase her name from the Lamb's Book of Life. Wait a minute. It was written with blood. What kind of eraser going to erase the blood of God? None. Man. That's why when your name was put down in the Lamb's Book of Life, here's what happens if you rebel against God. I can show you the scars on my body. I can show you my leg being crushed. I can show you three stab wounds. And I can tell you about two times being shot at. Want to know why? Because I decided to walk away from God and go in the world. You go, he didn't protect you? Yeah, he probably kept me alive and out of prison. But that didn't mean I still didn't have all these events take place. Yeah. See, when you walk away from God, it says he will chastise you to bring you back to him. But guess what? If he can't get you back, who knows what he does? What does he do, Brother Joe? He takes you home, amen? What does it say over in Corinthians? Some have gone to sleep early. It always talks about the Christian. It never goes, the Christian died. The Christian falls asleep. Yeah. He just falls asleep and he's in the presence of God. He says, many have gone to sleep early, before their time. Before they were able to do the things they probably wanted to do in their life. You know why? Because they decided to rebel against God. They decided that God's way wasn't going to work and they decided to turn away. The problem is once you were adopted by God and you became an heir of the Lord Jesus Christ and all of that, you're his child. And if you get straying away, he must chastise you to bring you back. But if you don't come back, he'll take you home early. And guess what you'll miss out on? All those things that you were trying to live. So here's what you got to attempt to do. You must attempt to figure out for you how to walk with God on this God-forsaken earth we live in yeah. with a bunch of wicked people out there that try to provoke us. How can we live amongst them? Because we have to live amongst them. Otherwise, we'd all have to move in and all stay together and nobody go out in the world. But he'll be off to college. You'll be out to your job. Others will be out to their jobs. Kids will be in the school and in the government school. Come on now. We're in for it. 
But in these last days that we live, here's the beauty that you can hold on to. At any moment, any moment, you can go right over to 1 John chapter number 1 and verse number 9, where it says if we confess our sins, he's Amen. faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You want to know how you clean up your life? You let God clean it up. Man can't clean up his own life. Sometimes it takes years. It doesn't take one day you get saved and the next thing you know, you're on the right track and you're doing all. No, it's a lifetime. Yeah. It's called a walk. Right. It's not a run. It's a Christian walk. Don't get caught lollygagging in the world. Don't get caught like Lot's wife looking back at the world, thinking that the world has something for you. Because the world will embrace you and kiss you on both cheeks and you'll never realize you've got the kiss of death from the world. Mm -hmm. The world hates you. The world wants to destroy you. Wants to take your virginity, young lady and young man, and wants to steal it from you so that you won't have it for that day when you get married to that special person. One man, one woman for life. For life. No room for divorce. There's no room. You say, well, yeah, you're a fine one to talk. Yeah, come lay in bed with me and then talk about being divorced. I'll tell you what it's like to be lonely. So I'll tell you what it's like. I'm in love with Jesus. Praise God. I don't know where I'd be. Well, I do. Where I'd be if I didn't have Jesus Christ. Okay? But I'll tell you what. You want to have your life fulfilled on this planet? Stop thinking about eternity. Amen. These young boys over here, we've got a opportunity to give them truths so that as they grow up, they can grow up with these truths. We've got a young teenage gal who will go off to school tomorrow uh, into the world and all that's there. And she's in there trying to fight. She's trying to stay right. But guess what? Whether she gets it or does it, whatever happens, your name, honey, was lit written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. And God got no eraser to erase it. All he Amen. wants you to do is when you fall short, he wants you to simply go, Lord, here I am. Here I am. Forgive me. I've heard. I've gone off the way over here, and here I am back again. Let me tell you something. The other day, one of my daughters called that I hadn't heard from in a while. And um, when after she got done speaking, I thought for a moment, and I thought, oh, boy, I'm a little upset because I've been worried for the last few months. I hadn't heard from them. But about the time I started feeling that, an overwhelming warmth came over me because... I knew that she was okay. And that's how God is. God looks down and he's upset that you wander away a little bit. But as soon as you make the call, as soon as you call out to him, when you're his child, he picks that up and he says, I've been waiting for you to call. I've been waiting for you. See, it's like that thing when you get around somebody and you go, you know, I haven't seen that person in years, but when I get around them, it's like we picked up right where we left off. That's how it should be between you and God. Yeah. You pick up right where you left off. Hey, guess what? Some have said to me, Brother Mick Hatfield came to our church one day. I was leading singing over at Adam Square, and he said, I was just with you a few years back. I want to know how you know these songs and blah, blah, blah. Let me tell you something about Christian hymns and Bible verses and things like that, it gets inside of you. And once it's inside of you, it doesn't go anywhere. And guess what? You can make it make it lay dormant, but as soon as you get around somewhere and those songs start being sung, something inside of you, Holy Spirit, inside of you begins to go, I know that song, or I know that verse. I've heard that verse. I don't know exactly, but I, I understand what he's saying. See, let me tell you, the no eraser, you get saved, you're saved. You want a happy life? Then maybe you ought to walk in sweet fellowship with your father. Amen. Now, my dad lives in Florida for six months out of the year. We're not real, real close. Some of you kids in here right now, you've got an opportunity to be close with your dads and to be close with your moms. Let me tell you something. Get close. Because guess what happens? When you get older, you begin to go that way. And you begin to live your own life. This is your time to be close to your family, close to your father, close to your mother, close to your brothers and sisters. Because eventually, at some point, they leave. They leave. And sometimes when they leave, they love the person so much, they actually get mad that they leave. 
Think about that. Isn't that a wonderful thing? To be loved so much that somebody's angry that you left, rather than have them going, get out of here. Listen, uh, here we go. You found over there in Daniel chapter number 12, Today, we read in Daniel 9, and we learned about what was taking place and the events that would happen. Then what I wanted you to see more than anything is he tells Daniel to seal that book up, and then he quotes that stuff about the wicked, let him stay wicked. And then when you go to the unsealing of the, of the uh, prophecy, because don't forget, Revelation is the answer to Daniel. It's the one that reveals more. Revelations in Thessalonians and Matthew all reveals what Daniel said. This is the answer to prophecy. See, Daniel was told these events are going to take place. When it comes over to the book of Revelation, it says, hey, not only is it going to take place, here's some more things that are going to take place. And if we had time, I could go through the book of Revelation and tell you about all the events that are going to take place. These, the, 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 these horsemen that are going to come and, and all the events that will take place. I mean, you've got events and, you know, they go, oh, look, the, the, the creatures are dying in the water, just like the Bible says. Did you know the Bible says that? Did you know the Bible says that at one point we're going to lose X amount of percentage of the uh, grass that we have and a percentage of the animals that we have and these events know what you're looking at the precursor you're looking at things to make you see it now and if you're not saved get saved if you're saved get right with God and know that today you could be before him before you leave tonight you could be in front of him and know this you have an opportunity to go there leaving here tonight no matter what you've done the rest of the week, you can start fresh tonight. You can take and go, Lord, first day of the week, I'm starting fresh with you. I'm going to read the Bible this week. I'm going to pray this week. I'm going to make sure I serve you this week, Lord, in my daily life. Yeah. Never mind coming in here. It's when we're out there that really matters. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you. And uh, we ask you, dear Lord, now to take and um, uh, just work on our hearts, Lord, and allow us, Lord, to take and leave this place being a little closer to you, Lord, a little closer to know that, God, you laid things out in such a way that you tell us the exact amount of days from the time that the 